Hi everyone, this is Key. Standing next to me is my friend Stanley Bishop. Um, he is an MBA. He is a business consultant. He is a broker uh, coach. And he and I collaborate from time to time on projects where we want to empower agents and brokerages to succeed and thrive. So we were talking about what we're doing right now, what's happening in our country. And we want to talk today specifically about financial health. So um, there's some topics I want Stan to talk about. And one of them is mindset. How does an entrepreneurial mindset, if it remains healthy, affect your business? Can you talk, talk, talk about that, Stan? Sure. So we talk a lot about this in the coaching on the one-on-ones. Mindset is a, is a state of mind in which you limit yourself or allow yourself to grow. And if you look at it from a fixed mindset or from a growth mindset, that, that really talks specifically about where we stand as a business owner. Do I have the abilities that I'm born with and that's all I have, or can I grow upon beyond that? A lot of times, uh, agents and brokers, they have this fixed mindset that they're not technology experts and they'll never learn from it. And if they, that's what they believe, they're going to be correct. I believe in a growth mindset where you can move past your natural abilities and we can actually learn past it. And another thing I'm really you know, researching right now due to the financial or the health crisis that we're all facing, which is impacting us somewhat financially, is this mindset of, of scarcity. The scarcity mindset is that we believe that we're not going to have enough and that we're going to lose what we've, what we've gained. So right now as entrepreneurs, that's the absolute worst thing to have in your mindset of thinking that you're not going to have enough. Um, this might be one of the best places for you to actually grow your brokerage. And we'll talk a little bit about that here in a second. Correct. And it's almost like a shift. You no longer see abundance. You see only what's missing. And you want to try to protect as much as you can, which does not allow you to grow. So I know you shared with me strategies uh, how entrepreneurs, business owners, brokers, team leaders, and agents can actually grow that mindset. Share them with me. Uh, I want everybody to hear them. So, so one of the strategies I would do right now is stop watching the news because the news is a negative vehicle that's bringing you a lot of doom and gloom. And if you're listening to that constantly, yes, we got to be uh, aware of what's going on in the world, but we don't need to be engrossed with it. The news wants you to be engrossed. It wants you to watch it all the time. It's not going to be a positive for your growth of your company. The second is, you know, Key and you and I talk about this all the time, is hire a trainer, hire a coach, someone who's going to help you get to where you want to accomplish, um, go to where you've never been before. A lot of times us brokers, coaches, and, and trainers, we've already been there, we've done it, so we can help guide you through not making the same mistakes we've made um, and having someone who holds you accountable to it. And the third one is improve your pillars of success. I know as a broker right now, if I'm sitting there looking at my company, I would be focusing on how can I improve what I have as a broker owner. When it looks at training, look at support, look at marketing, look at lead generation, look at culture. What can I do right now to improve upon my company? Um, a fifth one is that accountability partner. I think it's good to have multiple accountability partners, um, both brokers, both financial advisors, coaches, who can hold you accountable to those goals that you set. And I would be networking with a lot of these industry experts because everybody's affected to some degree with this uh, health crisis. There's a lot of smart business owners out there that are doing smart things for their business. You can emulate and learn what they're doing, um, and it's going to benefit everybody. So one of the things that I do in my courses, you know, my eight-week boot camp, what I do is I assign each agent a success partner. And not only do they work on the assignments together, those moments when one of them is not feeling as strong, the other person may be a little bit stronger, so they can lift each other up by, you know, reviewing what they're working on, by reviewing, hey, how did you do that market report? Well, let me show you what I've done. Like, oh, I like that idea. Let me, mm -hmm. let me use it in my own business. So this idea of creating a collaborative uh, ecosystem where we all work together and support each other is actually a plus to your mindset. It keeps you on track. So, absolutely, absolutely. So now let's talk Agreed. about financial health. No one wants to talk yeah. about it. Everybody does not want to look at their, you know, 401k. No one wants to look at their uh, checking account, but we must. So, like I said, we 
need to confront the reality that 30 days, maybe 60 days, we have to be running our businesses and stay open and make, you know, some sacrifices on how to do that. Can you address that? Yeah, I, I think there's a lot of businesses that are kind of sitting in the dark and they don't know what they need to do right now or what's the best uh, action plan for them. So I tell them right now, you need to go actually look at your account. I'm the type of person, I want to know what my 401k is doing right now. I want to know how much money I have on my operating account. So the step one is just that. Go, go review your financials. Go look at how much money you have in your operating account right now. Once you've analyzed that, you come up with a fixed amount. And let's just say it's $10,000. That's your fixed amount. The next thing I would do is look at what income I anticipate I'm going to receive over the next 30, 60 days. So if I anticipate I'm still going to get some income, maybe five, maybe 10,000 in income over the next 30, 60 days, well, there's 20,000 right there in terms of money that I have set aside. And then the third thing I'm going to look at is what's my monthly expenses been running? So if my monthly expenses have been running around, let's say $15,000 a month, um, that right there lets me know I need to plan for uh, either a capital infusion or, or finding ways to bring money into my business. Um, the fourth thing I would look at doing is finding all those monthly expenses, what can I reduce on the overhead? How can I potentially bring some of that monthly overhead down? Um, what I caution you to do is to not stop marketing because a lot of brokerages right now are looking at that as an expense and it's really an investment in your business. Another idea would be cutting employees. And that's another thing I would caution you in doing because employees to replace somebody, that's a very high cost to your business and to train them and get them up, up started. So find ways that they can stay busy, find ways that they can continue to provide value back to your brokerage and you'll continue to grow as a brokerage because this is not final, this is a short term. But um, if I'm looking at my financial checkup, that's what I'm gonna do right now. How much money do I have in my account? How much money am I going to receive within the next 30, 60 days? What's my monthly expenses been running? And what can I cut in my monthly expenses? And once I add all that up, I'm going to realize either I have enough cushion to take me through the next 60 days, or do I need to fund my, my business? Am I have to add money to it? Well, I know the new relief package that was put together by Congress has in it $350 billion for small businesses. Now, you yes. have to have uh, two years of tax returns, I think. They need at least one year. So you yeah. have to have your 2018. You had your file last year, your file this year. Correct. 2018. Uh, most people have not done 2019 because they, they're in a freeze mode. But there mm -hmm. has been an extension until July. Uh, I don't know if it applies to businesses. But let's say you had 2018 and 2017. You may want to decide whether a portion of that money is uh, an SBA loan. Now, you and I were talking earlier about a portion of that SBA loan is forgivable. It's, it, it turns into a grant if it's used for maintaining employees, paying rent, and keeping operations open for the people who work for you. So that could be a strategy. Would you agree? Agreed. Yeah, the Economic Injury Disaster Loans and Emergency Economic Injury Grant will give you up to $10,000, and that's all through the SBA. It's a very easy link, and we can put it in. You have this, to say uh, it again. I'm sorry. I got to cut you off. You have to say it again because you yeah. memorized it. I have, I've been trying to memorize it, and I can't. Say it again, please. So the Economic Injury Disaster Loans and Emergency Economic Injury uh, Grants, that is up to $10,000 of forgivable money that can go towards things like payroll, um, for uh, supply chain disruptions, paid business obligations, including your debts, your rents, mortgage payments. So there's a lot of different usages for that. Um, that's one of the programs I'd be looking at right now. And another way to look at it is if you're not wanting to go the SBA route, you could always go to a HELOC. You know, right now for in our state, we're seeing very um, affordable rates and interest rates on, on the home equity lines. And there, a lot of times there are no closing costs tied to that. So those are a couple of different ways to be able to weather the storm to get us through this next uh, 30, 60 days. Now, one thing you talked about uh, earlier, which is, should I pause or stop my lead generation system? So let's say I had a lead generation system. Uh, my agents are frozen, which remember, we need to get them talking to people. But maybe I should wait a couple of months 
before I invest in that. Uh, I think that could be a mistake, possibly. I think so, too. Yeah. I go back to 2007, seven, eight when the um, economic downturn of real estate impacted a lot of companies. Me as a broker, that's where I spent a lot of my uh, energy in terms of growing my brokers through marketing, online advertising, PPC campaigns. And what I found is that while the bro other brokers were pulling back from their marketing, my message was received much louder because there's less class, uh, customers who were actually marketing and advertising the way I was doing it. So my message is better, better received when less people are marketing. So I see this as a similar situation. You, you see the traffic online is going up. So people right now are, are looking at the situation as, you know, do I need to sell my house? Should I uh, move? Should I downsize? You know, what is what am I going to be needing to do over the next 30, 60 days? Um, so there's a lot of online traffic that's occurring right now. And for the brokers who are investing in their business and they're smart about it, they're not just spending the money, but they're engaged with their agents. They're doing webinars. They're doing online trainings. They're keeping their agents focused on prospecting and connecting with their customers. Um, and that's a big thing right now. So I, I personally think that if I was going to reduce uh, some of my overhead, one of the last places that I would reduce is my marketing dollars because that is gonna produce opportunities for us when this is over and this is not final. You know, we're, we're dealing with a situation that hopefully within 60 days, it's gonna be somewhat back to normal. But um, personally, I, I would look at this as, this might be the best place as a broker to uh, gain market shares with a lot of the other brokers out there are pulling back. Correct. So, which leads us to opportunities. See, this crisis, this uh, place where we feel almost, what do I do? What do I do? What do I do? Hidden behind it are opportunities for brokers, for team leaders, for agents. Can you talk about some of these ideas? What are some of the hidden opportunities that we could leverage right now? Well, as a broker, you know, your, your brokerage is, is built around growth. And one of the biggest places to grow your company is through acquisitions or through recruiting in more agents. So I think right now for brokers who are being smart about looking at the opportunity side, they would be looking at engaging brokers who they might find an acquisition opportunity. So brokers who are smaller than them, who probably can't um, withstand the financial downturn that they're facing through the health crisis, they would be a good candidate for a potential acquisition um, or a merger. So, so that would be one of the opportunities I would look at. Another opportunity would be the agents who you probably couldn't get a conversation with because they were too busy. There's a lot of agents out there that aren't busy right now that as brokers, we could connect with them for recruiting purposes. Um, so that would be another place. And then teams, you know, looking at big teams who have a lot of overhead expenses where you might come in as a broker and help um, relieve some of those overhead expenses. That would be a third place I would be looking at from growing the company side. Um, but other than acquisitions and recruiting and teams, as brokers, you know, opportunities wise, I'd go back to your pillars of success. You know, what kind of training am I offering right now? How can I get agents more engaged in this uh, business right now? There's a lot of consumers out there that are more accessible. They're online. Am I doing a good enough job holding a call night, maybe doing a virtual call night, doing virtual careers? Um, that is another place for growing the brokerage. I'm seeing a lot of um, people that are in the hospitality industry, people who are in the retail sector that are being displaced right now that maybe they looked at real estate at one time and maybe it wasn't the right fit then, but now there is, it is a good fit for them because they're in a place where they're being furloughed or they're actually lost their job altogether. So I would be looking at the career nights, virtual career nights as being a good app, uh, place to, to gain agents to your company. And some of them could be taking uh, online classes right now right. To get licensed so that as the market, you know, regains its momentum, we have a new pool of people to work with and they can learn all of the tools they need to do right now. Uh, Stan, yeah. those are great ideas. Uh, we always need a financial checkup. We need to mm -hmm. stay healthy physically, but also financially. Uh, thanks for sharing this with us. Thank you so much. Thank you. Anytime, anytime. It's always a pleasure working with you. And I know that you're telling the, the people who you work with the same thing I, I am. But remember, guys, this is not final. We're going to get moved past this. Let's focus on opportunity. Stop watching the news. And, you know, we're going to grow from here. So with that being said, Keith, thank you for the time for letting me come in here. And I'm looking forward to our next conversation.